Before we start building any microcontroller circuits, we have to figure out where our power is coming from. The particular microcontroller we'll be using and most of the circuits that we build will need 3.3 volts. So let's figure out how we can get 3.3 volts. We'll be taking from our USB cable two wires, a ground wire and a wire called VBUS. VBUS provides 5 volts and it's regulated by your computer. So it should be, you know, a nice clean 5 volts. Somehow we have to take that and make 3.3 volts. So there are a bunch of ways to do that. If you've just come from an analog design class, you probably think, oh, well, anytime I have a big voltage and I want to make a small voltage, I should use a voltage divider. So I could take two resistors to ground, and if I choose them properly, R1 and R2, I can get 3.3 volts out. And this is a design that totally works, we can make 3.3 volts. But the problem with this des design is that the current that we draw from 5 volts goes through R1, and we assumed all of it would continue to go through R2, and that's what made the voltage across R2, which would be 3.3 volts. But if we were to take that 3.3 volts and power stuff, say uh, a really bright LED, I don't know, 10 ohms or something ridiculous, that would be a, like a laser pointer LED, um, so much current would go this way that the voltage would have to drop. Um, or we'd have to make these resistors so much smaller than this resistor so that the current that does go this way doesn't affect the voltage. And then we're just wasting a lot of power, uh, I squared R power, in these resistors generating 3.3 volts from 5 volts. So there must be a better way to make 3.3 volts from 5. The solution to that is to use a chip called a voltage regulator. And of course, there's lots of types of regulators. Uh, the classic type is called an LDO, and it is a chip with three pins, V in, V out, and ground. Sometimes um, there's a regulation um, uh, pin so that the V out is not necessarily always 3.3 volts, but uh, some relationship between two resistors and the re regulator pin. But let's just say that we have a 3.3 volt regulator here. So it takes some V in and it makes 3.3 volts out. A regulator will have a uh, max V in and a min V in. It will have a max uh, I out. And it will have requirements like capacitors on the input and the output. Um, the uh, V out might have some kind of ripple. Um, so on top of the 3.3 volts, we might see like a sine wave. And by changing these capacitors, we can usually minimize that ripple. The downside to using a voltage regulator is uh, has to do with this name. Low dropout voltage regulator means that um, the input needs to be bigger than 3.3 volts to be able to make 3.3 volts, plus some amount, but they call it a dropout. So some voltage is lost, um, or some minimum voltage is required to be able to make 3.3 volts. An LDO is a low dropout voltage, meaning that this dropout parameter is on the order of, uh, say, less than one volt. So to make 3.3 volts, we would need at least, say, 4.3 volts. And sometimes that dropout is related to how much current we're drawing. If we're only drawing 10 milliamps, we can probably get away with supplying 3.4 volts. But if we want to draw an amp, we might need to supply uh, 4.3 volts or more. So when you're looking at voltage regulators, the things to pay attention to are how many capacitors do you need here? What are their capacitances? Anything bigger than 10 microfarads starts to be a little ridiculous. Um, the maximum V in could be something like 36 volts or could be only 6 volts. So if you're going to be varying the power supply, maybe you're going to switch from a 5 volt USB cable to a 6.5 volt battery pack, you probably want to make sure that the uh, maximum input voltage here can support you know, all of the possible voltages you're planning on using. And then uh, consider how much current you're drawing on the output. Uh, can it support that much current? As well as sometimes these have a quiescent current. Yes. And... That's the current that this chip uses all by itself just to operate. And if you were on battery power, you wouldn't want this chip to need 10 milliamps by itself to be able to run. You'd want this to be using something, I don't know, in the microamps. So that to make 3.3 volts, it takes only a few microamps, and that's not killing your battery regardless of how much power you're drawing. 
Okay, that's the classic voltage regulator, an LDO. We're going to look at one more, um, which is called a boost or buck regulator. The boost or the buck regulator has the capability of uh, boosting a voltage from below the voltage you're trying to, trying to make to the voltage you want to make, or a buck re regulator will do what an LDO does, take a high voltage and make it a lower voltage. And it does it using a combination of uh, smart switches. So you'll have a V in, um, go into this big block, and eventually we'll have a V out. And in the V in will be something like maybe capacitors, or maybe an inductor, and some switches that go to more inductors and capacitors and diodes eventually to V out. And the smart switch will read the voltage on the output and see, oh, maybe it's too small right now. So it'll uh, open and close a switch on the input to spike the voltage based on uh, these uh, RC circuits that are inside. And then um, a regulator, make, or a regular LDO might take that voltage and turn it into the actual output voltage, or it will do it so quickly that it can actually blink these switches on and off really fast to make the output voltage. The advantage here is that uh, we can take voltages like 1.5 volts from a single AA battery and make 3.3 or 5 volts, so we can boost the voltage up. Or we can use ridiculously large voltages, like 48 volts, that you might see um, in, a, in a new car system, and make 3.3 volts without dropping all the voltage across our chip. So we are usually concerned with the power loss or power drop over our chip because the heat dissipated, P is IV, across our regulator is going to be the current through the regulator times the voltage drop. So if we are, happen to be using one amp and we are supplying five volts and, uh, to make 3.3 volts, the power dissipated in the chip um, is going to be from this equation. So if we somehow wanted to use 48 volts, I don't know where we're getting 48 volts, but some big battery, the power dissipated in our regulator is very, very huge. Um, so much that that regulator might need a heat sink and it might burn out, we'd worry about that kind of stuff. Um, a boost buck regulator, um, typically has much better efficiencies than the LDO. The, the downside to uh, the boost buck is that because it's blinking these switches on and off really fast, the ripple is usually much, much worse than on an LDO. Um, so if you had an analog circuitry that was very sensitive to noise on this power supply, you might want to not use the boost buck. You might want to use the LDO. Um, but if you're going to be really efficient, you might use the boost buck. And if you're ever in a really big, bad pinch and you just don't have any regulators, you can use voltage divider. Just make sure that these resistors are pretty small, probably in the hundreds or less ohms, and they'll get hot. Okay, so that's a bunch of voltage regulators. Let's take a look at some data sheets just to see what uh, some of these chips look like. Right now, I don't think this is in your kit, but uh, I've ordered them, so they'll be here soon. Um, this is uh, the L4931, uh, a sta pretty standard uh, LDO voltage regulator. Comes in a bunch of different packages, so a breadboard will package like the TO92. Um, three pins, V in, V out, and ground. Um, the very low dropout of 0.4 volts means that we would need 3.3 plus 0.4, so like 4 volts to be able to make 3.3. That's great if we have a USB cable, 0.5. Uh, it's a low quiescent current, meaning that, um, so what does it mean? It's uh, 600 microamps when it's on and 50 microamps if you turn it off. You get output current up to 250 milliamps. They come in a variety of uh, different ones that you can buy from 3.3 volts to 12 volt regulators. Um, you only need a 2.2 microfarad capacitor on the output. And so those are the, uh, the specs that you kind of look for when you're looking at one of these LTOs. Uh, usually the page that you're really concerned about is what is the pin out? And this is always um, super annoying to figure out, but the, the TO92 package pin one is going to be V out, then the middle pin two is ground, pin three is V in. From the bottom view, so the legs sticking up towards you, that's how you read one, two, three. And if you get this backwards and you hook these up backwards, the chip gets really, really hot. Um, classic way to burn yourself, <laughs> plugging this thing in backwards. One more page that's interesting. This one's showing the capacitors. So they want a 0.1 microfarad on the input and a 2.2 microfarad on the output. Uh, 
Okay, so that's the classic LDO. Let's take a look at a step up, step down, which is a little more complicated. And because it needs so many components, usually you buy it as a breakout board, so pre-soldered. So the one that we'll be using is from Pololu. Um, the, the chip itself in the middle here, that's the S7VAF3. It's a step up, step down. So it can uh, take from 2.7 volts up to 11.8 volts to make 3.3. It can supply from 500 to one amp. Um, uh, so that's probably related to heat and how long you're drawing amount of current. If you want to draw a lot of current for a long time, it's probably more like 500 milliamps. If you want to draw an amp for a short period of time, it would probably work. Um, they've done some testing on a graph down here that shows the uh, efficiency. So uh, as you can guess, as you draw more current, it gets less efficient. Some of these chips actually are less efficient at low currents, and then the efficiency goes up and back down again. Depends on the different style of boost buck regulator that's in there. And here we can also see what's the maximum current you can draw uh, seems to relate to the input voltage. So if you were to give it uh, its maximum voltage, um, you can get more current than if you gave it a smaller voltage. That, that's probably intuitive too. Um, they're not showing the circuit diagram, but obviously this is a complicated chip. This big package here below the chip, that's an inductor. And there's lots of capacitors and probably some pull-up resistors and things like that. So these are probably complicated chips. They're made to uh, be re replacing some standard uh, like 7805 five volt regulators or 3.3 volt regulators. Those have three pins, V out, ground, and V in. So if you ever have a system that's not very efficient using an LDO, you can replace that chip with this chip. Pins are all the same and you'd have better efficiency. So that's how they've designed it. And you could solder it in. Actually, I don't like soldering in like this picture where you can't see the pins anymore. Um, you could also solder it so it's vertical. I'm about to show you how I've soldered it. Okay, so let's take a look at our components. Uh, so on the top of my breadboard, I have taken my soldered USB connector board. And I'm not concerned with the middle pins, uh, ID, uh, D plus and D minus, those are the data pins. Uh, we just want the ground pin and the V bus pin, which is supplying five volts. And I've taken them and I've applied them to uh, the ground pin and the V in pin of my boost buck regulator. And then I've taken the ground and the V out pins and I've put them into the rails of a breadboard. And at the bottom of the breadboard, I added wires to connect the rails on the right side to the left side. So now I've got 3.3 volts and ground on both sides of this breadboard. And we'll be using a lot of those. Here's our pick um, to build all the circuits in the future. So from the uh, regulator, I took a... Um, uh, red LED to a 330 ohm resistor so that I can see that my power is on. And if I just kind of yank that chip, I see the power goes off, power goes back on. And what we're usually concerned about with a uh, boost buck regulator like, with, like this is what is the, the ripple coming out? Um, is there any high frequency noise on the power supply? So I'm going to use my end scope to try see if I could see any of that kind of noise. Okay, so we're in the Enscope app. I have a wire plugged into channel one, and it's not plugged into anything right now. So if I just touch it, I get 60 hertz noise. And um, with a scope like this, you can see that, that the idle voltage is not quite zero. Um, it's just an antenna hanging out in space. And I'll, first I'll plug it into the ground pin, just to verify that my ground is uh, right at zero volts where I think it should be. And then I'll plug it into V bus, which is my five volt input pin to the regulator. Looks like it's right up at five. And now I'll go to the 3.3 volts. And there's 3.3 volts. And here I don't see much noise. Uh, to see it better, I need to zoom in in time. So I'll go to, I don't know, millisecond level. I don't see any kilohertz level noise. Go as fast as possible, uh, 10 microseconds. So do I see any uh, 100 kilohertz or one megahertz noise? Nope, it's nice and clean. So there's lots and lots of capacitors pre-soldered onto this voltage regulator. I'm not particularly worried about seeing any, any noise from this chip. Okay, a few other tips. Um, remember that the Enscope is a uh, board that's also supplying its own power, plus and minus five volts. The grounds are on the outsides, the minus five and plus five are in the middle. We actually, for most of this class, uh, ME433 Advanced Mechatronics, we're gonna be using all the 3.3 volts from this regulator to power just about all the chips we have. Uh, eventually, we'll add a six volt battery uh, to power some motors. We'll never need the negative five or plus five 
supply from the end scope. So we can just basically ignore those. And whenever we're trying to see things, we'll just be using the oscilloscope functionality. Remember that because it has its own power supply, and now we've got two power supplies. Anytime you have two power supplies, they need to have common ground to be able to understand each other. So I'll always hook up the ground of the end scope to the ground of my um, pick board so that they're not floating relative to each other. Of course, they're probably both plugged into the same USB um, like computer source, so they both have the same ground there. But eventually, we'll switch this power over to a battery, and then we'll want to make sure that the common ground is still there. So it's a good thing to just put that in there all the time. Okay, so that's how we make 3.3 volts from 5 volts.